Hello, in this demonstration, I will show how to package a PySpark program in Docker. I'll also show how to package a Jupyter server in Docker so you can run a Jupyter notebook in a Docker image. Now, once you have the Docker image with your PySpark program, uh, then we can run PySpark in Docker as your interpreter in PyCharm or VS Code. You can also run the program itself in a terminal, and you can also deploy the packaged up PySpark program. You can deploy it to a Kubernetes cluster. So because of the variety of things you can do with a program in Docker, it's very popular. In fact, it's not just popular for PySpark and Spark and Java and Node.js and everything else. You know, it's, it's used to run uh, Amazon website, for example. So Docker is quite popular, and it's a way to package up a PySpark program for a variety of uh, circumstances, so that's why I'm showing it. So this is mostly about Docker, this demo. I'll have another demo on showing how to uh, work with a PySpark program on a Kubernetes cluster. So this is mainly preparing for that. And that is we want to take some files that are describe our, our Python program and package it up so that we can run it in various circumstances. So if you think about how you can run a PySpark program, you can use a cloud notebook, which most people do. This is mostly for data scientists for exploration. There's some really cool notebooks. There's even some code completion, some graphics and all that. At some point, your program gets, gets to be a bit unwieldy because it's too big. And so behind the scenes, you may not notice it, but people put together a Python package, and then they import that to their notebook, and then they run code that's been written elsewhere uh, as basically Python or PySpark code written in PyCharm or VS Code or something like that. Another way is to have multiple notebooks and one call another notebook. And there's some platforms like Databricks that allow you to have a workflow where you call one notebook from another. And this is OK for starting out, but it's a bit awkward over time. At least in my mind, the notebook system is good for interacting with your program, but it's not maybe good for a software, software engineering perspective of modularizing, that's a word, uh, your, your program. So another way to do this is uh, to write programs is to use a Spark submit. That is, you write your program in uh, your favorite editor, not on a notebook, uh, you know, using VS Code or PyCharm or whatever. And then you zip up all your files in an archive, an egg for Python or a zip file. And uh, just like you might a Java program, a jar file. And then you use, for Spark programs, you use Spark Submit to submit your program to a interpreter or a cluster, or whatever you're going to, however you're going to run your program. Um, I have an example here in this slide of how to do it. And basically, you, you take all of your libraries and all of your program and just zip it up. And it could be, you know, megabytes, it could be gigabytes of, of Python modules and um, other things and um, resources and so forth. I find that um, this is slow to deploy. It's sort of awkward to develop, even if you use packaging found in PyCharm or VS Code. You have limited control over your environment, wherever you're going to deploy it. You don't know what kind of uh, Java uh, version is installed, that sort of thing. So this is OK, but um, I've used it. Uh, I personally do not recommend it. And then next up is using Docker. And Docker is super popular because it's super useful. And here's just another use of that. So the idea is to use Docker. And this is common for data engineers, as maybe more for data scientists would be using notebooks. Data engineers are going to take that notebook and convert it to be a Python or PySpark program and make it ready for production. And the idea is that you can declare in a file, a text file, Docker file, what the runtime environment is, including your program and what's in the environment in terms of like a Java version and environment variables and all the rest. 
So all the things you can do in Docker, we get the benefits of that when we write our PySpark program. And there's lots of benefits of Docker. Uh, Google around. The, the first thing that comes to mind is you've got uh, the infrastructure of your program described in a text file, which can be version controlled and allows you to have a great deal of control over the runtime environment of your program. Once you have that, then you can run it anywhere. You can run it in a terminal uh, on your computer. You can run it as your uh, PyCharm or VS Code interpreter. You can deploy it to a cluster on your own computer, like the Kubernetes uh, cluster for Docker for Windows, or deploy it to a cloud like uh, Google's uh, Kubernetes engine or Amazon or wherever you like. So this is, the, this is what this uh, demonstration is about, how to use Docker to package up your program so that you can use it locally as an interpreter or deploy it remotely. So we're going to do uh, packaging up our program. We're going to take a PySpark program, a demo that I have, and we're going to put it inside Docker. And just as a sort of an interesting variation, because everyone loves notebooks, I'm going to put a Jupyter in, uh, interpreter server inside Docker, and then you'll be able to access your Docker notebook um, through this uh, doc. I'm sorry, this Jupyter notebook through the Docker interpreter. And then once you've got it packaged up, then we want to deploy it. You can run it in a local terminal. You can use it as an interpreter for PyCharm or VS Code or whatever your favorite IDE is. And then you can deploy it to a cluster. And I'm going to, just for sake of demonstration, I'm going to deploy it to your Docker for desktop version of the Kubernetes cluster. And then I'll do another video on, on a more complete cluster. So the idea is that once we package up our PySpark program into Docker, now we can run it anywhere. And where is anywhere? Well, here's a terminal. I've got uh, WSL2, the Windows system for Linux, the second version of it on my Windows machine. And once that's uh, running, then I can package up my um, program. I put it in this uh, image called uh, my K8 Spark, K8 for Kubernetes. And um, I run the image creating a container a running uh, operating system, essentially, by saying docker run IT for interactive terminal. And then um, my image name and then bash is the shell that I'll use to work with my Linux image. There's some startup stuff. And then down here, once I'm into my running container, which is the running version of my image, I can do things like a listing LS, you know, for, for um, Linux to list some files. And then you can see in this, I've got some uh, files that I copied over to my image, some data folder directory, my module called K8 Spark. That's my Python module or set of Python programs. And a number of ways I can start my program. These are Python scripts, essentially run, which is going to run one version of my program, run Jupyter, runs my Jupyter server, run Pi, runs my hello world that computes the value for Pi. Okay, another thing I can do once I have my Docker, um, my PySpark inside a Docker image is I can use that uh, running image, the container as an interpreter for my PyCharm. And PyCharm, the professional version, has this way to say, you know, where do you want your interpreter? And you can look in a Docker um, Docker container for that, and uh, it'll it'll run it. And that's what this demo is. And of course, once you've got an interpreter in PyCharm or VS Code, then you write your code in one window, and you you know ship it over. You paste it into the other window, or import it, and you use the in this case the Docker interpreter to run and debug your program. And then you know that that Docker uh, interpreter will be the same one you'll deploy to a, a large cluster so you know it's going to work identically because it's using the same image. And then last, uh, just for demo, just to complete this demo and then I'll follow it up with another one um, more detailed, is once I have my image specified for PySpark, I can deploy it to a Kubernetes cluster. And this is a simple, you know, uh, Kubernetes cluster that runs on my uh, desktop. It's, you know, part of Docker for Windows, 
they have a, a checkbox for Kubernetes, and I'll just deploy it. And here it's uh, deployed to that cluster. I'll just show how that works. And just for fun, I'll go ahead and deploy to that cluster a the same image. I'm using every time it's the same Docker uh, image. I've got in it a, a program to run a Jupyter server. So once in that, here's the its startup uh, outputs a few console descriptions of what's going on, including the token. Then I can open up in my browser uh, access to that Jupyter server, and then I can then run a notebook. So I can run a uh, Jupyter notebook that is actually running PySpark, and um, it's actually running in a Docker image on my Kubernetes cluster. So it just demonstrates the power of, um, of this system. So I'm going to have a Python project. So in my previous demos, I put everything on GitHub. It's just another, you know, simple program or maybe a couple of files. This is going to be a project. It has a number of files. And it's going to have a, a root. It's going to be called k8spark. And I'm going to use the style of a Python module. So the name of my project folder is k8spark and the name of my source code folder within it is called k8spark and i have an init.py uh, file which is common for python modules and i got some other python files in here these are all pyspark python by the way the airbnb regression a hello world that calculates the value of pi a jupyter server and then the notebook uh, jupyter notebook that runs on that jupyter server and then some spark utilities which basically starts up a Spark context. Uh, I've got some resources here. These are used for specifying how to deploy a PySpark program or a Spark program to a Kubernetes cluster. Um, these are for specifying the details of what's called a Spark operator. There's two ways to submit your program to a cluster, the Spark submit, which is common, older, and more complicated. And the Spark operator, which is newer and simpler. And this is going to use a Spark operator. And then I've got a few simple shell commands uh, to build the image called Docker build and Docker run. And if you look at them, they're just one line of just convenience. So you can see what to do. And then there's a Docker file itself. This is the key to the whole thing. You know, how do I uh, specify a Docker file that runs a Spark program or a Spark program? And I'll describe it in some detail. The usual requirements.txt file for a Python program to load the modules. Some, um, some, some, some scripts here to run different programs. Um, and then I'm going to use uh, the um, I'm going to use the plugin called Cloud Code from Google. And it's a plugin that runs in PyCharm and VS Code. And it relies on some technology called Scaffold that allows you to describe how to uh, submit your project to a Kubernetes cluster. So I've got some scaffold uh, files here for three kinds of submissions I'm going to do, uh, which are according to the three kinds of programs I'm going to run. So I've got the run for an associated scaffold file, which runs an Airbnb, um, Airbnb regression. Um, I've got um, uh, a Jupyter scaffold, and uh, I forgot, I got Airbnb for Airbnb, and the other one is the Pi. Uh, uh, there's a Pi, um, Compute Pi program, Hello World, Compute Pi. And uh, anyway, three scaffold files, three different runs of the program. Uh, hopefully that'll become clear when I run it. All right, so in order to get all this to work, you've got to install Docker for desktop, Google Docker for desktop. It's required to do everything here. Uh, there's a checkbox there for enabling Kubernetes, and so you'll need to do that. Um, next, if you're a Windows user, it's good to install WSL, WSL2 in the newest version, so you can run all these shell commands. In general, it's a good environment to work with especially if you're doing PySpark or you want to work with Linux at all. Um, if you want to use the Kubernetes part of this demo, then you'll need to install Helm. And I'll show you how to do that. Just Google install Helm. 
And it's pretty straightforward, and um, that will allow us to do the next step, it is to install the Spark operator. This allows us to send our Python program to a Kubernetes cluster the easy way. There's the hard way, which is Spark submit, which is really not that hard, but there's the easier way, which is Spark operator. And I've got a little script that sets it up because there's a couple steps involved to work with the cluster. And uh, um, unfortunately, there's a little bug and it won't affect you unless you're going to have some ports that are available. And I do have that for my Jupyter Notebook server. So uh, they still not fixed it. It's a year old. Why have that fixed it? I don't know. But anyway, I have a little fix here, my version of it and uh, version 1.126. 1. So I'll show you how to do that. Um, with this setup, by using a Docker image, and we're relying on another Docker image from the web, we don't need to install Spark on our own computer. We don't need to set environment variables. We don't need to install Java. I mean, everything is a lot smoother with that regard. On the other hand, you do need to install a Docker for desktop. All right, so what's gonna happen here? Um, we're gonna end up packaging our program into a Docker image. And the way they do that is a file called Docker file. And Docker file allows us to start with a previous Docker image. And that's what this is. Um, there's some variations, but as a rule, these Docker files start with a statement that says from, and then another Docker uh, image. In this case, I'm taking one from data mechanics. It has a lots of Spark and related libraries installed, not all of which you may need, but it's great for development. Uh, on the other hand, it, the image can be a little bit large. So if you're going to do this in production, you probably want to start with your own uh, more slimmed down image that includes Spark and then add whatever libraries and modules you want. But anyway, for us, we're just taking the, you know, it's just demo. So we're getting a pretty big image here. We're running the following commands, which essentially specify how to build a Linux image, a Linux operating system. So we start with this Linux operating system, the Spark uh, 3.2 latest. We're going to run as zero, which is root. So we're going to be user root. We're going to update our current operating system, this image. That's all that does. It's a good practice to do that in case there's been some bugs for security issues. We're going to specify essentially the default uh, directory in a Spark image, which is opt for options, um, Spark, and then working directory. That's where we're going to work. That's where we're going to copy our files to. So when we, when we run our um, Linux image, um, we'll go to op Spark working directory, and that's where we'll find our files. The standard um, process that we're going to run the ID you know, we're going to be logged in essentially as the Spark process. Its ID is 8185 by, um, by convention. Uh, we're going to add some directories and make sure everything is the way we want it for Spark operations. Sometimes these are done in an image, but I just go ahead and run this to make sure that it's all standard. Then later on the Docker file, I have some things with regard to Python. Here I have, um, uh, I set my directory I'm going to work with, the application directory is the same one above, the working directory, OPT, Spark working directory. The Python I'm working with is going to be version 3 and same with pip. These are environment variables, so I can use them in my uh, running container. I'm going to copy over from my local computer, my project here, into this uh, image I'm building up into this operating system I'm describing with this text file. I'm going to copy over requirements.txt, which is the Python way of specifying the modules necessary for my Python program. It's going to go into this directory, which you can see up here. It's going to be in the op Spark working directory. And then I run uh, pip to do some installs, and it's going to install the requirements.txt and um, the modules specified in there. And um, that will prepare my Python environment in this image. Finally, on to my particular files. I'm going to run as a Spark uh, user, and I'm going to copy over the files from my project. So you go to this uh, you know, project, which I have in PyCharm. 
you have a number of files, run.py, run.pi for the computing pi, and run Jupyter, and so forth. I've got even a data directory, and then my module, k8 spark. Those are all going to be copied into my image, into the Docker image. And that way they can run on this, you know, when I run this uh, image, it's going to be running as a container. And I can, you know, run my program. And I just make sure that that directory is owned appropriately. So uh, let's see if we can get this stuff to work. So we're going to start with uh, setting up our environment, uh, assuming that we've already installed Docker for Windows. Let's uh, prepare our environment. Remember, we have to have Docker installed, WSL2 for Windows users. We install Helm and the Spark operator. So Docker for desktop. I've installed Docker for desktop already. Um, it's important that you have this WSL2 engine available. Um, in the resources, you want to have WSL2 integration. For whatever reason, uh, it seems to work with this checkbox. I used to also have to select the distribution. Um, hopefully, it'll work with you with just this checkbox, but you might have to do the um, enable for this additional distribution. So there's the sort of the default distribution and the, and the additional one. All right, so. That's my integration with um, uh, my Windows system for Linux. It's not necessary in a Mac or Linux computer, obviously. And then also under Kubernetes, I have a checkbox here so I can run my Kubernetes um, uh, cluster. All right, so next up, I have to make sure that I have Helm running. So let's see if I can uh, talk about how to install that. So if I Google, I Google install Helm should take you to helm.sh docs intro install, which is where I am here. If you just scroll down, I recommend you use one of the install guides through the package manager, homebrew here for a Mac and so forth. I wouldn't do this Windows. I would instead use the Windows system for Linux and install using the Ubuntu instructions here. And essentially, you'll copy these commands one by one and paste them into your terminal. And here's a terminal. You just paste them in here uh, one at a time. And what it should do is download the appropriate things and install Helm. Okay, that's the gist of it. And next up, you'll have to install the Spark operator. And um, there's a variety of ways to do it, but I've got I think the easiest way is I've got a script for you. I'm in my directory of this project that I have this set up. Just run it. Mine's going to say it's already done, but I just want to show you how it works. It's going to download or update the uh, repository information. It's going to switch to Docker for desktop. And uh, it's going to install the operator. It's already been done, so it gives you a warning. And then it's also going to install the service account. This assumes that you have your Docker for desktop running and your Kubernetes cluster enabled. And then it will install into that cluster the service account for Spark. OK, so the Docker for desktop and Kubernetes must be running for this to be useful. OK, once that's done, um, then we're about ready to go with the rest of it. So let's go to our project. Here's the project. I zoom in. This is in PyCharm. I've got my code in the, the folder called K8 Spark, the directory. The overall project is called K8 Spark. So this is a convention common with Python modules. The project name is K8 Spark, and the directory for my files of this Python module is called K8 Spark. And I have an init.py file. And then I have some other files within it. Also have resources for deploying to a Kubernetes cluster and a few other um, files in here. One of which was uh, set up, which I just ran. And you can look at some of the details of it if you want. In short, it's going to install a Spark operator. And rather than install the one that, that uh, is the current default of, off the web, which is, for me, it's 1.126. 
there's a little bug in there and you can read about it this issue and uh, I fixed it for this version and hopefully you know pretty soon they'll fix it uh, for the version that is available from help anyway that's uh, installs the operator and then also installs uh, or creates the account for running spark so that's the idea of that um, One of the next things we want to do is go ahead and build our image. And you'll see here, I normally just type it out, but I have this convenient script called Doctor, Docker Underbar Build. And you can see it doesn't do much other than say, Docker Build, dash T for tag, the name of the, uh, the, name of the image, my K8 Spark. And it's very important, it has this dot for the current working directory of wherever your Docker file is. So that's that, and later on we're going to run it, and same idea, this is just for convenience, typically I would type this out, docker run, uh, interactive terminal, and then the image name, which was just created there, and I'm going to access the image by accessing um, bash, which is a shell within the, within the image. So let's give it a try and see if it works. So I'm going to type... Uh, the build first, docker, build. And mine is going to be pretty quick because I've already done the build before. Hopefully it works pretty quick. Uh, your first time of running this, it could take 10 minutes to 30 minutes, depending on your connection and how fast your computer is. It takes a while to download the image. It's going to use, as I mentioned, this Databricks, I'm sorry, data mechanics um, image. It's pretty large, you know, it's megabytes. And um, overall, it's going to take a while. And then once that's downloaded, if you look at the Docker file, it then copies in uh, a number of the files that are, you know, in our project. So for me, having done it once before, I mean, this is the beauty of Docker. It's pretty quick. It accesses this, uh, in this image, which I have to ha happen to have local. And then it runs an update on the operating system. It sets the working directory. It runs some commands here. Finally, it copies in the files from my project and it should be ready to go. So I could look at Docker images or I can um, find it in the interface here on um, in the Docker for desktop. You can say, click on the images and um, it should be, here we go, here's my Spark, and that was created recently. So that image was created by my Docker build. Now let's go ahead and run it, and I have a Docker run command, and then once again, it's very simple, it's just Docker IT, Docker run IT, and then some more details about the image. Let's give it a run, and the first stuff really comes from the original image, which was from Data Mechanics. And then finally at the end uh, runs bash. And I don't know if you can see, I'm not in my, my local computer in, in a sense. I'm running uh, this Docker container. And essentially I'm running the operating system that's found in this Docker container. So I can do ls in the current working directory. You can see is the working directory specified in the Docker container op spark working directory. And you can see a listing. Um, if it's easier to see here, we've got some folders or directories, and then these uh, Python programs, which I can run. So now I can go ahead and run. If you just wanted to see one, for example, um, I can do um, look at this file, and it really doesn't do anything other than port this local module, which is K8 Spark. And then from that, there's a hello main, and I just execute that hello main. So uh, let's give it a try. I'll say Python run pi. And this pi program is the default one that comes with the Spark uh, distribution. And you can calculate uh, pi using a Spark cluster. After a little bit, it uh, gives you some value for pi. It seems to work. The other one I have in here is... Um, 
one for doing Airbnb. The, the Airbnb provides some data. If you look at the program I have, download some data from Airbnb and use a regression to predict uh, prices. So we could do that just for fun. Um, so run it. And this will take a little bit longer because it's going to do a pipeline for the regression, downloads the data, and so forth. After a little bit, it finishes. It uh, does a regression, uh, gets some model metrics, and um, that's about it. So I'm, I'm exiting that. Just so you know, um, I'm inside my container that I created, and this container has all of my my files in it. In this case, it actually output some images here based on the regression. Um, so just to note that when I run Python, this is going to be a Python program that has Spark in it. That's because the way it's set up. All right. So I'm going to exit this container, which is running, and I'm back to my regular old uh, terminal in my Windows system for Linux. And I can see the files I have here. So that demonstrated uh, running PySpark in a terminal. Now let's go ahead and see if we can't access this from PyCharm. So I'm going to open up PyCharm. And the idea here is I want to say I want to debug a program. Um, I'll open up hello. Here's my program. And I want to set the interpreter for this to be that container that I just built from my Docker uh, image. Just a reminder, here's my Docker file. Uh, I started with the data mechanics. I updated it. I set a working directory. I just made sure some Spark-related directories were good. Then after that, I did the Python things. I made sure I was working with Python 3. I ensured that Python, my interpreter here, installed the proper modules. And um, then after that, I copied in my own files here at the very end. As a rule, if you read about Docker, this is a, a reasonable order. You put the things that change the most at the end of this file. So if I keep changing my code in uh, this K8 Spark folder, then I want to put that at the end of this Docker file and make the execution of Docker, the building of Docker, faster if the things that change are here at the end. Okay, so that was my um, Docker file. Now I want to access that in my uh, interpreter. That is, I'm going to go to File Settings here in PyCharm, and there's different ways to add interpreters here. And maybe should zoom in a little bit. And if I go to the settings uh, in my uh, by charm, you can add an interpreter with this gear here, Python interpreter for this project. And you can select different kinds. Typically, I use Conda for a local one, or WSL if I want to access the interpreter that's found on my Windows system for Linux. And this time, I'm introducing the idea that you can access your interpreter through Docker. And so you just select this. Uh, by default, it's going to be your local Docker for a desktop if you're on a Windows computer running it locally. And you give it the name of your image and uh, my K8 Spark. And you can use a colon latest to indicate the most latest version of that image. And then the path. And, in this case, we don't have to give a path, just the name of the interpreter. But if you wanted to have a Python interpreter within that Docker container, um, you'd specify it. But once I've specified this, uh, then I can now use this Docker contained Python interpreter uh, for my debugging of my program, my development. And so let's go ahead and give it a run down here at the bottom. I should do. Python console. And now it's going to look for that image in the local Docker registry and then start it up. And I have access to it and I can, you know, run some sort of program in here. I could 
copy in the files, or you know, there's other ways to work with PyCharm, but to, to move the files in, copy them in, or parts of the file. These programs here, find, and should I keep going? Just main, just so I could work on debugging this and run it. Okay, so hopefully it should work. Just want to point out one thing about this interpreter on um, PyCharm. I'm going to go into it a little bit further. Let's show all. This is the one I was working on. Um, zoom in a little bit. Uh, you can give it a name, of course, the server, and so forth. And then here, somewhere, there's some paths. So let's see if I can find the paths. So once I've selected my interpreter that's pointing to Docker, I want to set the paths. And the way PyCharm does it is I've got this little drop down here. And I can say the path to one of the directories inside the inside the Docker container, they default to be op project. That's how PyCharm has set it up. It goes to what? So this is uh, the path in the container running is op project, and that maps to something on my local computer, and that's where my files are. So you want to check to make sure that that points to the your project so that you can access the files um, that uh, access the files from the running Docker container that get mapped to the project's uh, files on your on your computer. Okay, so that, hopefully that should work, and sure enough, it ran and it worked. Okay, so I demonstrated how to run the PySpark program, putting in a Docker container and using that container as an interpreter for PyCharm. The same thing works for VS Code, of course. All right, next up, I want to now run this thing on a cluster. So I want to run my uh, program on a cluster. How can I do that? And I can run it here as, uh, uh, on a Kubernetes cluster. So let's go ahead and run that. So this, I'm going to stop this. I'm going to use some uh, plugin that makes a lot of this easy. It's called um, Cloud Code by Google. You can add it to PyCharm or VS Code. It's going to rely on these scaffold files because it relies on underlying technology called Scaffold. And then, um, in general, if you're going to deploy to a Kubernetes cluster, then you will um, you can either do Spark Submit, which I'm not doing here, or you can use Spark Operator, which I am doing. And if you're doing the latter Spark Operator, then you need these one of these files for each kind of program. So, for example, if I'm doing this Spark Hello, I've got a Spark Hello YAML or um, dot YAML file. And you can see at the top here, this is Spark application. And if we look through some of the details of it, it's going to be a Spark application. It's running Python. It has a driver that um, is going to request a certain amount of memory, a certain amount of virtual cores. And the executor is similarly specified. And then um, the way I'm using this one is dynamic allocation of executors. The minimum is one executor, and the max here is two. You can change it, of course, to have more. And then additionally, down here at the bottom, there's some details about interface to the Spark UI. The details of this um, are not important for this demo. I just want to point out that there's a description of how to deploy your application. In another video, I'll go through that. The other part is um, there's a scaffold file. And this one is the one that Cloud Code is going to access. It says, how do, I de how do you deploy your, your uh, Docker file? So what's your Docker file? It says, here it is. And that's the, you know, everyone calls it Docker file. What's the image called? And that's the, it's going to build an image from the Docker file. And it's going to call it my K8 Spark. Of course, I've already done it. But you could use this to do the build instead of the command line or script build. And then uh, what's your scaffold uh, file called? And I'm sorry, what's your, um, your file called for your Spark operator? And here's the 
file in the Spark operator. All right, once you have all that, and it's all set up in this project. So once again, another video on the details of this, but I just want to point out that this uh, system is set up, um, it's a common way of working with Scaffold, which is a common system to use. Spark operator, another common system to use. And then um, I've got the um, Cloud Code plugin. How does that, uh, how is that used? Over here on the right, I'm going to look at the configurations. So let me uh, load up a, a configuration. And uh, here are the configurations I have currently. And I have one for each of the kinds of runs. I've got Spark Hello, which is going to calculate Pi, and Airbnb, and Jupyter. And if you look at the settings, the setting that's going to matter the most is this Build Deploy. And if you look at it, you have a drop down here. And it has to be one of these scaffold files. So the scaffold files are found here and they referenced in the build deploy of your run configuration. So I've got one for Jupyter, it refers to the Jupyter scaffold file. Airbnb refers to the Airbnb um, scaffold file. And uh, Spark Hello, that should refer to the last one. Scaffold, maybe I should have given it a different name, but there they are. And you can make your own, hit the plus sign, make a cloud code Kubernetes. And you can give it some name and then select a scaffold configuration file. One other thing that might be of, I'm going to get rid of this, of interest is that if I go to my run, there's a configuration here about where do I find out information about a cluster. And it really won't matter for this demo. Right now I'm using the configure, configure, configure uh, information from Ubuntu. But you could also, in the Windows machine, just choose your home kube config. Uh, configuration and that's just going to be a description of the of the um, clusters that your that your computer knows about so what clusters let's look over here to the right in this cloud code has a nice little browser for these different uh, clusters and I mean I've got another cluster micro k8s and you could also put here Google Kubernetes engine or Amazon or whatever in this case, I'm just using the Docker desktop cluster, and there's nothing running right now. There's no pods running. Let's see if we can change that by running um, one of our demos. And now let me go ahead and go to the Spark Hello. And the idea is it's going to look at this um, scaffold file, which is then going to refer to this, uh, this Spark application file and it's going to end up deploying my application and then running this code here which is in hello pi and it knows how to run it because if you look at the spark hello um it says the, among other things it says the application is in this run pi file and that run pi file is this one here it's going to run hello main and if i go back to my code then hello main is here all right, let's give it a go. So I'll press the play button here. I've got different drop downs for different configurations. I'm going to select the one for Spark Hello. Now, if this is the first time I've done this and I did not build my Docker image before, it's actually going to run Docker build. In, inside the Cloud Code plugin, it's a Cloud uh, SDK, and it includes Scaffold. It includes Docker uh, for building, and it does all of that. So it's going to run, and um, if we look here to the right, we can see that it actually got deployed. And I can right-click, and using this cloud code, I can say to um, stream, stream logs is what I want to do. And I can see the output of this execution. And the execution should be going through and calculating pi. And it's going to use a couple executors. You know, it's part of the details about the Kubernetes and, and Spark and how all that works doesn't really concern us here, but I just want to know uh, that my program is running. And so I took the same uh, Docker image, 
I ran programs in the terminal, ran, ran it in PyCharm's interpreter. Now I've deployed it to the cluster, same, same image. Then sure enough, eventually it runs and completes and tells me what the value of pi is. And I could do the same for Airbnb by selecting the Airbnb drop down. I don't think I'm going to bother with that, but you can run it. It'll do the same thing. And now on to maybe something a little bit more interesting. Um, I'm going to go ahead and run my um, Jupyter notebook. And what this is going to do is same Docker image. And if I looked inside the Jupyter uh, code, it's going to create a Jupyter notebook server. And then I'm going to access this um, everything in my working directory, which is going to include these files I copied over, which does include my notebook um, here, my Jupyter notebook. So let's give it a go and see if it works. So I run at the upper right here. Press the play button on this configuration I've set up for um, Jupyter. Change it with a drop down and then run it. Right now there's no pods running, but once this gets going, hopefully I'll see one of those pods uh, start. You can also see it has some service URLs. So it has one for the Spark UI, which is 4041, and one for my Jupyter notebook. And pretty soon my Jupyter interpreter um, starts up. It's found in this driver. And I can go ahead and right click and stream the logs. And I can see some output. Here I output the token because we're going to need that in a moment uh, in order to access. So I'm just doing a control C for copy on the Windows computer. And let's go to this. Um, let's go to our service URL, which is found in this run. Service URL 8889 is my Jupyter notebook server. It's asking for my token. I printed it out. So I've copied and pasted it. I'm going to log in with that. And now the folder I have here inside my Jupyter notebook should look familiar. It's the working directory of my Docker image. And so I've got my data folder and my module for K8s and the runs and so forth. And um, so let's go ahead and look at my K8 module where that's where I put my notebook. So I'm click on my notebook. And now I'm, I'm running uh, in the Docker image, the Jupyter server, which is running my notebook. And I can go ahead and do the usual. I'm just doing shift return or you could run all cells if you wanted to. But go through each one, you see that they execute in. And let's go ahead and run main. So this notebook is in, in uh, my Docker container. And hopefully it'll work. I'll go back to my um, the execution environment. And I can see up here in the upper right that now not only do I have my Jupyter driver, but because that notebook has spun off a couple executors because it's running the Spark execution environment, I can see what's going on there. OK, I could look at the um, the uh, streaming of the logs of that console to see what was going on. But one of the things I would like to do is look at the Spark UI. So let me look at this other link. I've got two links, and one of them is the Spark UI. So let's see. Yeah, I click on that, and I can look into it to see what's going on with my Spark execution. So this is uh, a view into the Spark execution, which once again is uh, simply running in a Docker container. So you can do a bunch of stuff here. I can make a new notebook. And of course, one of the issues will be when you're all done, maybe you, uh, maybe you save some data. It'll be saved local to this container. And then you need to get the data out of that container. And there's some ways to do it um, to copy from a Docker container out to, the, to your, your operating system. All right, I'm going to go ahead and cancel all this because we're pretty much done. And. I'm going to stop my cluster here. So press stop, uh, stop the execution of that deployed application. And pretty much done. So that's my demo of using Docker for a PySpark program. It's super valuable. Initially, you're going to use a, doc, a, a, a notebook to do your 
exploration of a PySpark program, but eventually you want to package it up and make it a production ready system. And for that case, you're going to want to use Docker uh, to deploy your PySpark program. Um, so this demonstrates a bit of how to package up a program. It works for any program. That's why Docker is so popular, but I showed how to do it for PySpark. I also included how to include a Jupyter Notebook server if you wanted to, not commonly done just for demo purposes. Then once you've got your Docker uh, version of your PySpark interpreter, then you can run your PySpark program in a terminal. I showed how to do that. You can have it as your interpreter for PyCharm or VS Code or whatever IDE you like. And then you can also then deploy your program to a cluster such as the Kubernetes cluster, which is part of Docker for desktop. So the idea is eventually after exploring your, your programming with a notebook, you end up packaging it as a common sort of Py, Python module that runs, uh, is packaged in a Docker container and then deployed to a cluster. Okay. So hopefully, uh, that will work for you. Um, download the, the project. It's a whole project. It's not just one file. And then uh, there's a readme that describes how to do this step by step. Hope it works for you.